I don't think there's anything that's certain in the world at the moment. There's a lot that can change, there's a lot that can happen. And I think that is in the back of your mind every time I'm going into work. Adult trauma, ETA five minutes. Got an assault coming in. He's stabbed multiple times. Five-year-old hit by a car, dragged for three metres, degloved the right side of their scalp. Code red. They're now saying partial amputation. A traumatic cardiac arrest. This is just disastrous. Travelled by cow. Why does that make that up? Oh, it's a proper day today, isn't it? St George's, London, one of Britain's busiest a &E departments, under more pressure than ever. What are you doing? It does sometimes feel like a battlefield and it feels like a losing battle at times as well. Oh, you need to calm yourself down. I have ten traumas and absolutely no space. 25-year-old jump from a third floor balcony. This is the point where we can make a difference. Thank you, everybody. Place where life. Best place to make friends. <laughs> A and E. Love and loss. Scariest thing in my life. I thought I lost it. Unfold every single day. A life is not just a singular thing. Things that happen to you have a huge effect on the people around you as well. You scare me so much. You know that. Yeah. All the patients you're about to see were treated in just one 24-hour period. I see behaviour every day that reaffirms my belief in the inherent goodness of people. It's all a bit of a shock, isn't it? <laughs> and I think I'm incredibly fortunate to work in that environment. It's a lot to take in. It's the love of my life. Swinney Forest is huge. It's square mile after square mile of forest. Steve and I often spend weekends mountain bike riding on the trails. For a few hours at least, it is like being a young kid again. Steve is a diehard cyclist. He loves getting out. He's always pushing himself. <laughs> We're in the middle of the woods, right in the thick of the forest. For all intents and purposes, we were out alone. We had no idea it would end in such an awful way. Steve was just lying there, not moving. I think he must have clipped a root with either his pedal or his back wheel. And then the momentum of the bike has thrown him off. But his foot was just flopping around on the end of his leg. When the paramedics started to cut his sock back, you could see Steve's bone sticking out of his sock, where they started to put his foot back into place. I heard the grinding of Steve's ankle bone on his leg bone. It echoed through the whole of the woods. And Steve was crying out in absolute agony. It was a, a sound I've never heard a man make before in my life, and I hope to never hear it again. St. George's Recess. OK, it's, it's a trauma transfer. Is that how you're calling it through it? OK, thank you. Adult male trauma call, ETA two minutes. After being treated at the scene by air ambulance doctors, 48-year-old Stephen is being transferred from his local hospital to the trauma centre at St George's. Being a transfer means that there is a reason that that other hospital couldn't deal with them. There is definitely something serious with this patient. It's an open fracture, dislocation of the left ankle. The accidents that occurred at high speed ring alarm bells because they might have life-threatening injuries that need immediate management. Stephen's wife, Becky, was out with a friend when the accident happened. It's 
lovely restaurant and it was a really lovely day. We'd finished our meal and we were just chatting, thinking about getting the bill, and that's when the waiter came over. And he said, you need to call your friend Kelly urgently. And then I looked at my phone and I had 22 missed calls. So I went outside and rang Kelly and she said, like, Stephen been taken to hospital. She said, just come home, you know, as soon as you can. I just thought, oh my God, what's happened? When I actually got through the door, they were on the phone to the paramedic saying he's being taken to St George's. And I was like, oh my God, you know, what's he done? One, two, three, then. So, 48 year old Stephen, um, he was going down a hill on a mountain bike, hit a tree root, put his right ankle down, and this came off the bike. And um, he fell forwards, did not hit head, and helmet was intact. When we got there, he had an open, fractured, dislocated ankle. Um, this was reset by the helicopter. Um, we went to Frimley Park and they have diverted us here. Well, should we get him off the scoop, please? Just some nice deep breaths in and out. Keep going for me. Particularly with open lower limb fractures, there's obviously been quite a lot of pressure for the bone to go through the skin. Did you hit your head at all? No, not at all. No, and you've got no neck pain no. at all. If there has been damage to blood vessels, particularly arteries, we need to know that there is enough blood supply below that injury, because if there's not, then potentially the lower part of that limb is going to be devoid of enough blood and ultimately end up dying. So that is a limb-threatening injury. Did you hit the handlebars on the way on, uh, in your tummy, in your no, chest? No, it was like my, my leg got sort of twisted in the bike, spun round. Yeah. And it, inverted my foot. You need to have a CT angiogram of his lower leg. We do something called a CT angiogram, which means that we can look at the blood vessels and the arteries and the veins to check if there's been any damage. Got some morphine for you. Thank you. If there's an issue with the blood supply beyond that fracture, then that's something that needs to be dealt with quite urgently. Well, it suddenly sort of hit home, really, that he could lose his leg. I was worrying about what he was going to be like and how he was going to cope with it. Doctors suspect that 48-year-old Stephen has an open, dislocated fracture of his ankle following a cycling accident. Their concerned damage to the blood vessels could lead to him losing his foot. When I was 14, I had a girl move to my school. She told me about a boy called Stephen from Woking. I think I knew then that he was going to be my husband. Hi, mate. Hi, Rachel. You're going to do a scan of your legs? Yeah. I didn't meet him for another... 10, 15 years, probably. When I did meet him, I thought, that's Stephen. That's who my friend was talking about. I think we were destined to be together. Just one night, I went out with my friends, and he was out with his friends, and he smiled at me in a kind of twinkly smile. Yeah, I was fine 10 minutes ago. We just got talking and we didn't stop talking, really, that night. I didn't talk to my friends again, really, and he didn't talk to his, and I think that's the night I knew. He'd proposed on Christmas morning. He didn't get down on one knee, he just let me open a box, and as I opened it and he'd, he'd put in some cardboard into the box, marry me. We didn't have a big wedding, we just had a wedding breakfast at a lovely hotel and then we had a big band in the evening and it was lovely. He did the most wonderful speech. Just so nice what he said and he was quite um, 
Romantic. Breathe in and hold your breath. He can be very sensitive, but he likes to be the boss. And that can do my head in sometimes because I also quite like to be the boss. He is a man's man and he likes to provide, yeah, for the family. He wants us all to have nice things and be happy and he's a provider. They say, they say being healthy is good for you, but I think I've never heard of anyone injuring themselves sitting in front of the telly for cold beer. Steve is a carpenter. Yeah. I'll be doing plenty of that yeah, now, That's it, we laid up. Yeah. He would be off to work 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and he wouldn't be back until 6.30, 7 o'clock that evening. Sometimes it was quite hard because I had to be the one that was here picking up everything else. He just wanted to look after us. He's a good man. I have no idea what I've done, really. I just don't know how bad it is. Until you really have a look at what that fracture looks like, you just don't know what's going on. Even those that have a good blood supply, there is still um, complications that can lead to amputations being required further down the line. When we call a major incident, if you have someone who's come in who's got, for example, a white powder on them, don't know what it is. You can't get a powder wet because it might activate it even more. So we dry decontaminate them. So we'd get them outside at 10 metres away. So this so you're may... going to be shouting at them through that from 10 metres away? Yes. Is that loud? Get dressed. Yeah, yeah. Take your clothes off. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Bridget. 70-year-old Bridget has come to A&E after falling on holiday. I'm Becky. Nice to meet you. I'm one of the nurse practitioners. So what's happened to your wrist? I fell in walking in Greece 10 days ago. OK. It just tripped over. I slipped walking down on shale. Oh, fell OK. fell very heavily. It was very swollen, but there's a lump there. I've got a bunch of friends who I've gone walking with somewhere for a week every year for the past 10, 11, 12 years. We've walked in the Drakensberg Mountains in South Africa and in the Simeon Mountains in Ethiopia. Is this your dominant hand? No. No, you're right this one is. We've walked in Turkey and Crete and Italy. So is it this area that's uncomfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but actually, it just aches all oh, the way. way up. A core group of somewhere between 8 and 12 will go. I think part of it is the conviviality of this group. They are an interesting bunch. And you can make a fist. And can you touch your thumb and little finger together? That is saying something down there. OK. I'd lived quite a restricted life as a child, really. My family were Irish Catholics. My sister and I went to the local convent. Here. Yeah, elbow's fine. OK. I think so. It's just it does ache. I was 17 when I went to Trinity College, Dublin. Here I was with the Irish Sea between me and my home, and there was a great feeling of liberation, I suppose. It was very exciting to get to know so many new people. Um, let's try and find Start one. getting to know boys, because I hadn't done very much of that at home. One of my walking friends is a doctor. She said it, she thought it might be fractured at the time. OK. I married somebody I met at Trinity, but that didn't work out. Handy to have a doctor with you. It's a shame they haven't got X-ray vision, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought I would marry again. 
but I didn't want to marry another wrong person, and I didn't trust my judgment. Mr. St. George, good afternoon. Yeah, go ahead. Twenty minutes away. Thank you. Thrombolysis is called ETA. Twenty minutes. An 89-year-old man is being rushed to A and E after collapsing at home. He said to me, "Oh, I think I'll go in the garden and potter in the greenhouse." I was just keeping an eye on him by looking through the kitchen window. I noticed that he was staggering and supporting himself on the shed. I rushed out and he was making horrible noises and, and the breathing seemed very unnatural. And I thought, this is serious. Yes. What was the story you said? Right, so outside in the garden, yeah. picking weeds, wife notices him to have a wobbly moment and he collapse. She drags him inside, brings him ambulance. She said he was unconscious for about 10 minutes. OK. By the time we've got there, he's starting to come round and we've then fallen back into this. Derek, can you open your eyes? Derek, can you squeeze my fingers? Squeeze my fingers, Derek. A stroke is a brain injury where part of the brain has been damaged by an artery being blocked off by a blood clot. So he's got unequal pupils, he's got reproduced GCS, so clearing when he's had a bleed. Anything beyond that area that's blocked off then starts to die. There's so many different things that can be affected, your speech, or you might have blindness or blurry vision. All right, let's get him some access and some blood. It's very scary. You do get people who die from their strokes. We are going to need some airway support, I think. I'm just concerned things are going to go downhill. It was terrifying to think that something was going on with his brain. Sorry, Derek. I thought I was going to lose him. Can you follow my fingers? Can you follow my fingers? Doctors are concerned that 89-year-old Derek may have suffered a stroke after he was found collapsed in the garden by his wife, Priscilla. Derek, can you see me? I know. No, so he's woke. No, unfortunately, kind of the team are with him at the moment. There's quite a few of them because obviously, yeah. I don't want this. Do not business. You want it? Yeah, no, that's fine. And they, and they, 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 they will do. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you, they will do. As soon as they've done their assessments, they'll bring you in. Because at the moment, there's so much, so many things they need to do, and family members just. All right, they won't. I promise you. Four limbs. Yeah. Actually, so. No. You're all right. You understand what's going on. You're in St George's. All right. Yeah, you collapsed. Yeah. How can I get here? Your wife dragged you indoors and called an ambulance, and now you're here. We're going to take you for a quick brain scan, and then we're going to get her in. Apparently, she's in a bit of a state. Do you remember much about what happened? I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, was in the garden. Uh, I, was in the okay. I met Derek in 1972. I went to work in the same office that he did, which was an insurance society in Croydon. 
and I was doing secretarial duties for him. We need to just get a certain blood test, but it's from the artery in your arm. You need to just keep your arm still and it's going to be a little bit painful, OK? There was a young lady in the office who worked with me who was getting married. She invited me to the wedding and Derek was also invited. Very good, perfect. And at the reception, he was asked by another work colleague to give me a lift home and make sure I got home safely. How old are you? 90. OK, OK, OK. He gave me that lift home and I suppose from that point, there was a different sort of interest, perhaps a more personal interest. Are you having pain or any uncomfortableness in your eyes? No, I've had no pain or discomfort over anything. I mean, I just couldn't understand why I'm here. OK, that's what I we're going to try and find out, I all right? You know, I haven't felt I'm well. No. No. Just um, grab the door, I'm fine. Although he was 24 years my senior, he was very easy to chat to, very kind, sociable. He asked me out to a restaurant. I think it was to celebrate his birthday. That was our first date. Just stand here for a second. So, we're just waiting for the scanner to be free. We'll go in. They might be free. And we'll see what's going on, OK? I think we had borscht soup to start with and I just couldn't drink it because I was so nervous. We used to go to the theatre, the cinema, we used to go sailing, he used to take me with him. I remember once we got stuck on the bank and the tide went out <laughs> and it was quite a while before he could get the boat going again. He must have proposed about two years after we met. He had been married before. I think he was nervous at first about embarking on another marriage, but I think I persuaded him. Derek, are you feeling sleepy? No. He seems to be a bit drowsy all of a sudden. Derek, open your eyes. Do you feel a bit sleepy? Are you sure? You look a bit sleepy. Derek? Open your eyes for me. I'm a bit worried. Derek? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just... <laughs> yeah. A bit crap, isn't it? Yeah. We'll get you sorted. Stephen is waiting for the results of a CT scan to reveal the extent of injuries to his ankle after he came off his mountain bike. Where were you going when the accident happened, or were you just, uh, just having a... I was just out for a ride. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. On your own, or were you with...? No, um, with one of my mates. Horrible traumatic things happen. Yeah. And I just look around, and it's just, like, hanging. I was like... Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, well, at least it's still, it's still on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One sec, I'll be right back. Yeah, cheers. Stephen's wife, Becky, is looking after their children at home over 30 miles away in Surrey. In August 2003, I just had our second child. Steve was feeling tired. He had definitely lost weight and he didn't have any energy. He, didn't, he was struggling. He thought it was because he was working and because of having the baby. But obviously it wasn't just that. I think we were just up in the bedroom. I think the baby was in the cot at the time, yeah. He was just in a towel, coming out the tower and said, I think I found a lamp. Just need to do a quick ECG, if that's OK, just a quick tracing of your heart. I just immediately comfort him. You know, I tried not to be too emotional because, obviously, he was the one that was worrying. I wanted to be a bit stronger for him. I can remember he didn't want to go to the doctors. And I really pushed him. I said, you know, you're going to go. 
He just needed to get that doctor's appointment and then he would know. Hello, Isas. A bit safe here. Doctors now have the preliminary results of Stephen's CT scans. Have you had a look at the chat that was transferred from Frimley? Um, CT Angie? I can't see a fracture. Yeah, it's very odd. I wonder if he just dislocated it without fracturing it. All right, bye-bye. Hello. I don't think you've actually fractured it. I think it was an open dislocation. Is that good news? Um, is it better that he's not fractured it? Well, we need to, to review the wound. We need to assess everything. Any open dislocation is potentially limb-threatening, and the main reason for that is the increased risk of infections within the bone, infections within the soft tissue, that ultimately could threaten that limb later on down the line. It's a really nasty wound. So we're just going to have a look at the wound, all right? OK. Can you wiggle your toes? The doctor just said uh, straight away, I'm going to refer you. I've just got this memory of having to wait like four weeks or something for the test to come back and then going to the hospital and going into the room with him. And that's when the doctor said, Steve had testicular cancer. Yes. Can you, can you feel that? Yeah. Yeah. The journey back was horrible. I, I drove back and he just didn't talk. He just didn't talk at all. He was really... Frightened. I had a toddler, I had a newborn baby. It was horrible. I was just really frightened that something awful was going to happen to him. Emergency nurse practitioner Becky is assessing x-rays of Bridget's wrist after she fell during a walking holiday in Greece. I was living in Ireland when I was married, but that didn't work out, so I came back to London. I have a sister who's 18 months older than me, Sarah. And I had a half-brother, David. We were very close. He was very sociable. I could talk to him in shorthand about the sort of troubles we might get ourselves into. So, it looks like just a little undisplaced crack through it. It should heal up lovely, but unfortunately, it's going to need to be held in a nice still position to be. I fixed. had a feeling so that. We're going to have to pop you into a cast. That one annoyingly takes about six weeks to heal. Okay. Righty ho, I usually go as a care assistant uh, to Lourdes, helping with sick people. Oh, that's nice of you. And I'm due to go in six weeks. Oh, OK. Years later, my brother had very bad heart disease, and he had been told that the next heart attack would probably be his last. If I'm going to cancel, this is when to do it, you see. He had his final heart attack, just sitting outside in the car. So, what do so we yeah, do I'll now? Pop you in a cast now, if that's OK. OK. I'm going to move you around the corner. Just around this way. I miss him enormously to this day. I think you'll find it a lot easier to manage with a bit of support on it. I think it, it would, yeah. Um, do you live on your own? Yep. He was a tremendous brother and a tremendous helper of other people. Um, it depends. It depends. It de so you said you haven't had children. Was that by design or by accident? I certainly didn't set out not to have children. My brother and my sister didn't either. <laughs> so um, we are the end of the line. Unfortunately, the wrist is going to be quite stiff when it comes out of the cast but I've got a wide circle of friends. It is a great help against loneliness and the isolation that you can feel. 
I'm very lucky in a way to have younger friends and I also volunteer in a primary school. I listen to children read one-to-one -one, or sometimes give them a bit of help on whatever work they're doing. Oh, it's nice and warm. Yeah. So that's gonna I love that they know I'm not a teacher. They call me Miss Bridget or if they forget about the Miss, they just call me Bridget. Oh, that's very neat. A bit of a neat freak. <laughs> and I've had godchildren and friends' children. You know, if you live in London and if you've got a spare room, you're very popular with lots of young people. And we do stay friends somehow. Feel comfortable? Fantastic. Looks wonderful. Lovely. Right. Is that it, then? That is it. I'm going to grab your notes and we'll go make an appointment for the clinic. OK. I'm very lucky that I have quite a social life and I do see people. I don't think of it in terms of a surrogate family. I just think of it as life and what you make of it. OK, okay nice to meet you. Indeed, Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Back. Derek is being rushed back to Resus after he lost consciousness whilst waiting for a CT scan of his brain. Derek? Derek? If you're concerned about the patient, then it's important to get him to an environment where you could potentially be giving CPR. Derek? Derek? This has got to go in just to protect your airway. Uh -huh. Sorry. Ah, well on. done, that's better. Oh, oh. That will make breathing a lot easier, my love. Stay with them, I'm going to go to... Don't worry. <coughs> Derek, open your mouth. We got married in 1975. I don't think my parents were over the moon about my marrying an older man. He was 24 years my senior. But they soon learnt to love him when they met him. Should we go there? Bring the monitor down. I've got the suction ready here. Medical staff have stabilised Derek and are again sending him to CT to determine if he has a clot on his brain. Derek had a daughter and a son by his first wife, and when we got married, we had a daughter and a son. So he has two daughters and two sons. My daughter's called Demelza, and my son is Ross. I was a great fan of the uh, Paul Dart books by Winston Graham, and when I was a young child, I'd, I'd read a lot of them, and I always liked those names. And I've just got four litres of oxygen to go on, yeah? Okay, Derek, we're moving you up the bed. Derek loved having a second family. I think he, he missed out largely on, on, on his first family because he worked at sea for quite, quite a while. He was very hands-on. I remember when Demelza, our daughter, was a baby. She used to cry a lot and she was in a little crib. Derek had the idea of tying a piece of rope to, to the crib, and from his bed, he used to rock her every time she cried. Derek could turn his hand to most anything. He could do anything in the house. He landscaped the whole garden. He built fish ponds uh, with waterfalls. He erected a 25-foot porch at the front of the house. He could do anything. Right. We've been married 42 years now. I never had reservations about marrying an older man. 
I was very young. You don't look ahead to what's going to happen in, 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 in the future. Thank you, guys. I didn't realise that as he got older, there could be a lot of problems health-wise, etc. I, I didn't anticipate any problems. I was very happy to marry him. You can't stitch it now because it's, it's, it's swollen okay. and then it's, it's, it's gaping. It's too tense. Yeah. Okay. Doctors are trying to stabilize Stephen's ankle so he can be transferred to a ward where specialists will decide if he needs emergency surgery. We will put it in a cast for you, okay, so it's a lot more comfortable. Okay. How bad is the pain? It's quite bad. Okay, we can give you some more pain for Yeah. Are you able to lift your leg up slightly? Yeah. Steve was diagnosed with testicular cancer 14 years ago. And I remember being in that hospital room, and the doctor then said, you know, you're lucky, you've got two children, you may not have any more. I think I was trying to give him a hug, but he was very closed off at that point. So I just let him be. That's only that's what he needed. A week later, he was there having the operation, and then he had to have all of his radiotherapy every day. So it was quite scary. But he was down, obviously, after the operation. I think he was worried, and I think it's probably knocked his confidence a bit. He is aware of the fact that he's had cancer. But the one thing that worried him more than anything was that he would come back and he'd get it again, and then obviously he'd lose his other testicle, and then, as far as he was concerned, he wouldn't be a man anymore. He got very down about that. <sighs> oh, OK. Oh, that's nice. Oh, warm. Steve, you got the all clear, but he has a blood test every year still, just to make sure he's OK. I remember ringing him and saying, guess what? <laughs> and him saying, what? And I said, guess! <laughs> and he was just that quiet, he's saying, are you pregnant? <laughs> yes! <laughs> I remember it being... I remember being really, really happy. Evie was a really lovely surprise. So it was lovely to be able to say he's that better that he's been able to have a, another child as well. So, yeah, that was the icing on the cake. Thank you. We're going to go up to the ward. All right, you can get some kip. Take care. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, just relax there. How are you feeling now? Sure, I'm okay. Any change in your vision at all? No, everything's a bit hazy. Of a bit hazy. Can you look at me? Can you tell me which side's moving? Point to which side. Doctors are trying to find the underlying cause of Derek's suspected stroke. He lost consciousness twice, and they will now administer a clot-busting drug. This treatment can only be given within four and a half hours of the symptoms starting. So... We are three hours exactly now. Yeah. Derek, we're giving you a drug, a blood thinner through your vein, a really powerful one, OK? OK. 
because it looks, we're wondering if you've had a stroke. We have a thing called door to needle time. That's the time that they arrive in A&E to the time that we give the drug. There's a saying that time is brain. So the quicker you do it, the more brain you can potentially save. He always worked incredibly hard throughout his life. Derek trained as a mechanical engineer at Aldershot and was sent to Germany just after the war. He was part of a team that was responsible for recovering war damaged vehicles left from the war. Derek, so you're in hospital, okay? We're giving you a drug to make you feel a bit better, okay? Your wife's outside. Okay. When he came back in 1948, he went to work for the hospital service. I think the buildings were being rebuilt and he was involved in that. I'm just very sad that it was because of his job that he has very bad lungs damaged by exposure to asbestos. We need to get his wife in. She's been held outside yeah, for I'm, so long. Okay. Derek, let's get the missus in. She's been worried. When he was working on the war damaged hospitals, he says he remembers walking through clouds of white dust that was the asbestos. The legacy of that has been, for the last 12 to 13 years, extreme breathlessness with periods of violent, relentless, incessant coughing. It's very cruel that such a capable, kind man is, is now reduced to being dependent on his wife for, for most things. How do you feel, my sweetheart? Priscilla's sister, Anita, has joined them in recess as Derek is being prepared for transfer to a ward. He's incredibly stoical. He hardly ever complains about his health problems. When I see him with the grandchildren, he's incredibly young at heart. And in that sense, you do not notice the age difference between Priscilla and Derek. I just love him to bits. Working in the emergency department makes you realise how important family and friends and support networks are. Those patients that come in on their own, they don't have anyone. It's often quite sort of humbling that they're there on their own and supporting themselves. But you also see elderly couples that have obviously been together for years, carrying on with life and enjoying life together. It teaches you how precious life is and how something can happen at the drop of a hat. And even if it's minor, it can have quite big consequences on your future. every day. It took about three months for the after effects of the stroke to subside and for him to sort of get back. You know that it's going to be a long uphill struggle. I don't remember coming out of hospital. I have to ask Priscilla there's a lot of things I, I just don't remember. My mind doesn't seem to have grasped that. Mm. 
If Priscilla hadn't found me, I'd still be there. I've got a marvellous wife, and she's turned into an equally marvellous carer. She's the bedrock everybody turns to if there's a problem. I owe my life to Priscilla, there's no doubt about that. I was worried he was going to get depressed, but he surprised me because he was really up. It definitely shows you how easily your life can just be turned around. It definitely makes you realise that work isn't everything. It does kind of put things into perspective.